Sure. Okay, so we have started the recording. Today we are going to talk about introduction to topology. Uh, over to you, Chalish. Go ahead. I'll share my screen, okay? Yeah. Okay, so you guys are able to see my screen? Um, yeah. Thank okay. You. So, okay. Yes. Okay, well, uh, so, okay, my, I might as well start with the doubt of Radhika. So she was saying about everyone has this book by Rudin. So if everyone has it, uh, I think Vipul must have addressed it the other day that a set A A set A and a set B. These two sets were constructed, right? Like uh, we were cons considering the set of all rational numbers, which are square is less than two. And set of all rational numbers whose square is greater than two, right? So. Uh, yes. So what this, what the book is telling you that there is no, there is no largest number in B. So you have to first consider, look, B is a set of rational numbers. These are not the real numbers. So since we've already seen that X such that X squared is equal to two, this cannot be, this cannot be rational. This cannot be rational. I think you've already seen, you've seen this in high school and you must have also seen that the other day. So if you construct, if you just construct this set, you will see that there's no such rational, there's no such rational, which, which is, suppose I choose a rational number A, which belongs to this set B, okay? Then, I can always find a rational number B, which belongs to the set B, such that B is less than A. So this is a key property, which the real number has. You can find, you can always find a smallest number or a supremum or an infimum, okay? A least upper bound, as we call it, or the greatest lower bound. But in the case of rationals, this is not possible. That's what, that is what we mean by completeness. What we call as completeness. Completeness of R. But the Wait. set of real numbers is complete. Bye. It's complete in its operation. Bye. Okay, and we uh, and the set of ra rationals. Q is Q by Q we denote it's rationals. Denoting we are doing. Okay, the set of Q, rationals is not complete in R. The set of R is complete. That means any set has a least upper bound in it in R. Any bounded set has a least upper bound in R. So we will not go into the nuances of the subject for now because that that will be too time taking you can still go through that we can discuss it i can suggest you materials for that and rudin is good enough for that so what he mentions it here he says um, just a second yeah similarly huh, a has no largest member so if if he would have written a has no largest member in a in a then it would have been much more clearer but he means it that the, there is no largest number in A. That you can always find a number, given a number A, which belongs to A, you can always find a number B, which belongs to A, and B is strictly greater than A. Similarly for B. Similarly for the set B. For the set A. Because these sets were the sets of rational numbers. 
under certain given conditions. Uh, have I made my point, Radhika? You can just reply in the yeah, chat. Yeah, I think uh, um, you can check in chat. Yeah, Shailesh, she understood, I guess. Okay, sure. Fine. So today we'll delve into the field of topology. Okay. So. It's not a jargon. I think it's a common terminology for computer scientists too, uh, topology of networks and all. But uh, it's a pretty much a pure mathematical field. So before beginning topology, a general point set topology, as we call it, point set topology. Before beginning point set topology, I would just give a brief overview of metric spaces. This will help you because without knowing metric spaces, it will be too hard to grasp the idea of topology or topological spaces, the more abstract spaces. So metric spaces stems from the idea of a distance. Okay, what do you mean by a distance? Sure. So the idea of a distance in a real line, in a real line. If you consider any two points, suppose I consider a real number two and three. So what will be the distance between these two points? It's pretty simple, I guess. It's just the distance between these two points, which is one. And since it's a distance between two points, we'll always, we always try to associate a positive number to it, a number which is greater than zero, or equal to, greater than equal to zero. We always try to associate a positive number because Sorry, uh, talking about distances in terms of negative numbers makes not much sense. It might be useful, but for our consideration in metric spaces, what we call as distance, it will always be a positive number. And it's a pretty intuitive idea. The distance between these two numbers, it's one, right? And anyways, if I consider any other number, similarly, A and B, I think you get the idea. This is between two and three can be computed as, computed as three minus two. So you don't always know which number is greater. Here we always knew that two is lesser than two is less than three. But in general context, if there are two numbers given X and Y, and we are asked to compute what's the distance between these two numbers, we don't always know that what, which number is greater. So it's always best. It's useful, it's handy in mathematics to introduce this absolute value. I think everyone knows what the absolute value is. In layman terms, you can just say that whatever number you get out of compu after computing x minus y, you just take the magnitude of it. Just ignore the sign. Suppose I took two minus three. I'll just ignore the sign. I'll just take positive, the positive part. To state it more mathematically, the absolute value is x when x is greater than or equal to zero minus of x when x is less than zero. I think this is clear. Okay, I'll just check the chat. Sure. So moving forward, I started this idea with the concept of distance. So this absolute value, the absolute function, as, as we call it, was introduced to keep the number strictly positive, strictly greater than or equal to zero. Okay, as we did not want want our distance to go negative. Okay, so the idea of distance in real line was pretty simple. If there are two numbers, X and Y, the distance between, suppose I denote distance between X and Y by D. The distance between X and Y is X minus the absolute value. You can always call, you can also call this as the mod, but uh, I would reserve that word for some other 
concepts because uh, at times it happens in mathematics the number of uh, a similar word is used for some other concepts too so it does not get confusing and mod is i think pretty much useful in computer science too so i would not that word here so it's the absolute value now mostly we mathematicians try to use functions so i think you get the idea why i write d with x and y because it gives us enough information about what we are trying to look so d can be thought of as distance x and y are the two points where we are trying to look compute the distance so this general idea about distance between any two points any two points that may not be the real line now that may be a plane a plane for that matter uh, a plane in mathematics is generally called the r2 plane because the cartesian the cartesian coordinate system empowers out to, empowers us to look at it look at, look at things very simply you know so if there are any two points you can again talk about distance between these two points because distance between two points does not uh, it's irrespective of where you are talking about these two points can lie anywhere right in general terms these two points can lie anywhere and you can talk about distance between these two points uh, in ai you will come across this uh, in terms of pixels in terms of different pixels or if it may not be pixels it may be mean different attributes of the pixels or of the images or of sound or of the data but this concept come comes in handy in ai pretty much you might have heard of things like l1 norm i'm just taking a brief digression here so i'll come back to this l1 norm l2 norm but before this i'll just i'll just state the formal definition of a metric what is a metric then as i said metric here the d the function d it represents distance between two points so i'll just write it d from a space it's a function from any non empty subset where x is any non empty set okay so x cross x it's it's one of the cartesian product so this is uh, okay i'm sorry i should use some other okay so this is x cross x okay so if these are two sets so it's just the ordered pair like r cross r this is um yeah even i don't uh, yeah here yeah, yeah, i think the uh, shell is dropped somehow uh, let's just give him some time and he'll join back uh you could hear me right all right I see Shailesh back. Shailesh, are you there? You're on mute. Um, you me now? Ah, uh, yeah. Hi, you're back. Yeah. So. When, when was the last point you left? Um, I mean, I was 
uh, you were telling about L1, L2 now, man. Probably, okay. probably functions, okay. yeah. The distance is a function. Yeah. You stated a point as matrix spaces, what they are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll start with that again. Okay. So, yeah, someone mentioned about Euclidean distance. So, right. This is what, here, what we talked about in R, in real number. This is Euclidean distance. And all the distances we talk about in general terms in real life, most of them are Euclidean distance, unless you're talking about space, space, time, or something like that. Uh, most of the things, distances we talk about are Euclidean distance. And, uh, okay, so in a plane, you can always compute a distance between two points in plane. I think you know the formula for this. Hey, Shailesh, uh, I think you forgot to share your screen. Yeah, um, yeah, we can see now. You can see the screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so the idea of a median distance. Uh, so between two points in play, suppose I give this coordinate x1 and x2, y1, y2. So I think you know the distance between two points can be computed as square root of x1 minus y1 squared, x2 minus y2 squared. Okay. I think, I think this. Uh, I think you all know about this distance between two points in plane. So I'll not uh, go much into that. I think everyone knows that. So I'll just jump into the definition of a metric space. So between two sets, uh, this idea of a Cartesian product it just it just signifies that we are taking two points because distance is always measured between two points, right? Maybe the two points are distinct. Maybe not. So what are the properties of this function? Why? So this function is called a metric. Metric. Or distance function. These are there are certain properties. Like I like to mention one of the properties as distance between two points is always greater than or equal to zero. Okay, it's always greater than or equal to zero. As we mentioned, we want it to be non-negative because uh, negative distance makes not much sense. And distance between x and y is equal to zero if and only if so this is the sign of if and only if i double f i'll just if and only if if and only if x is equal to y so i made an error here i think yeah Okay, yeah, so there's no equal sign here. Yeah, sure. So yeah, so this statement is pretty much an uh, important statement that D of X and Y is equal to zero, if and only if X is equal to Y. So suppose I'll move this condition if and only if, and I just mentioned D of X, Y is equal to zero if X equals to Y then we might come into trouble. We might land into trouble. Uh, I would like if someone just comes up with an example in the meantime, uh, while I explain this, uh, comes up with a, it's a pretty simple example you can come up with that which may not be a metric. First, okay, let me first just complete the definition of a metric. Distance between two points X and Y is obviously equal to distance between Y and X. So of course you don't want the distance to change while you are coming back. Of course, it happens in traffic, but that's that because you that is because you take a different route. And distance between two points x and y is always less than or equal to okay. So what I think you all you understand this. The second point, I think you understand it. Uh, it just says the distance between two points. I'll, uh, it's it does not change irrespective of where you are calculating it from. Uh, maybe it's from x or maybe from y. So the third, the third property 
it's generally known as a triangle inequality or in simple terms you can just say that distance between two points x and y is always less than the distance between x and y through a different point or via different via a third point any third point will always be less than this so basically the x z d d y z so basically it's talking about this so it's a triangle inequality i think you know this by saying the third side of a triangle is always less than the sum of the other two sides i guess you know this by this definition so this is known as the triangle inequality the third property Okay, uh, just for your sake, if you want to follow this, what we are talking about, uh, we can also open page number 30 of Rudin metric spaces. If you are unable to follow directly through in, in real time, so you can just uh, open up page number 30, 31 from Rudin. Okay. So, yeah, and let's give an example of a metric space. Rather than delving much into the concept, just let me give an example. So this was the Euclidean distance in R. So we can just simply verify how is this an Euclidean distance? How is this a metric? So basically a metric is this function, okay? The function which we defined having these, these three properties is what is a metric. And the space on which this metric is defined. So here the space was x because it was defined on the space x, okay, on the points of space x. This space, along with this metric, is known as a metric space. It's a pretty handy idea uh, to know how this came useful. I could just like a bit of digression. Uh, to Einstein's theory of relativity. So, if you might have heard of it, uh, he did not use plain Euclidean geometry for his theory of relativity. He used something known as a Riemannian geometry. So, in space or in relation to space time, things are not in a plain surface. Okay, so you cannot talk about distances in terms of Euclidean distances. Okay, uh, you might have heard of something known as Riemannian geometry. There is something called as hyperbolic geometry. And there's, there's something called a symplectic geometry. These are concepts of geometries which are known as non Euclidean geometries. So Einstein used this, was one of the first very famous uh, applications of non Euclidean geometry, uh, known as this uh, Riemannian geometry. It's a kind of a non Euclidean geometry. There are many non Euclidean geometries. So Riemannian geometry is among one of them. So Riemannian geometry uses something known as the Riemannian metric. Okay. Euclidean distance comes in handy when you talk about a plane surface, okay? But as you know, even the Earth, this is Earth is not flat. So technically, if you talk distances in Euclidean distances on Earth, uh, I think you are a bit skewed because Earth is not flat, mind you. If you talk about small distances, that's fine. But if you talk about larger distances on the surface of the Earth, uh, you have to take into account the curvature of the earth and you might come up with some other metric okay uh, i think people generally associate with that with the hyperbolic geometry uh, but i'll not uh, talk much about that because i have no expertise in that field i just i just wanted to mention this riemannian metric to you so uh, uh dear, dear einstein used it for his theory of relativity and of course it's it's coming in handy for many things Okay, so moving forward, yeah. Our Euclidean metric, how is this a metric? We can just easily verify. Just looking at the first property, okay? The first property says distance between x and y should be greater than zero. So x minus y, this is of course greater than zero because this is an absolute value. Okay, this is an absolute value. 
so is of course greater than zero. In the first condition, you might have seen this is this is an important condition. You might take some time to get used to this if and only if statement, but what if and only if says is just this that dxy equals to zero implies x is equal to y. And if x is equal to y, this implies dl distance between x and y is equal to zero. I'll have to force myself to say that this is the distance because this is actually a distance. We are trying to generalize the concept of distance through a metric in a metric space. Okay. Right. So, yes, this if and only if condition. So, when you always break a if and only if condition, it breaks into two conditions. You can always go from this here to there and here to there. You can go both ways. If you are given this condition, you can go here. If you are given this condition, you can go here. Okay. So, there are two ways. So, this means if you know the distance between two points is zero, then you can say that those two points are identical and if you know two points are identical then you know the distance between those two points is equal to zero that's what the first condition says okay that is what the first condition says this condition so of course in in case of real line the euclidean metric or the euclidean distance uh, x minus y mod is equal to zero this of course implies x is equal to y okay this implies x is equal to y and distance between x y is equal to distance between y x because x minus y is equal to and since we do not care about the signs in an absolute value we can of course say is this i think it's pretty easy to follow and what we talk about triangle inequality is trivially verified in here i think you all can verify this uh, it'll just say I think it's it's provable so i'll not i'm not going to prove this in here you can go through any book for a proof or uh, i don't think you'll find it in a book right now you can find it yeah it's i think you'll find this in chapter one of rudin i think you'll find this inequality if you want the proof of this you'll find this in chapter one of rudin so moving forward uh, this was what we call the euclidean distance in r or in Rn for that matter. Rn is basically just this. You just increase the dimension. Okay. Like R2 is a flat plane. R3 is a space, is a space, is our space what that we talk about, where there are three dimensions. Okay. There are three dimensions. In Cartesian system, you can talk about this in XYZ. So there, even there, you have this concept of distance. Suppose X is X1 up to Xn. Y is Y1 up to Yn. Okay. So distance between X and Y can be xn minus yn squared so it's all under root okay even this is a euclidean distance because it comes from the fact that we are measuring distances on a plane and you can i think it's easily it's it's a geometrical fact this is this is a geometrical fact and you can verify this is a metric you can verify this uh, i'll just move forward uh, before that uh, anyone has any questions regarding this
Anyone has any questions regarding this? Okay, I'll explain the space part. Okay, I'll just go go through that once again, this entire thing. Okay. What we call a space here, look, we define this metric, this distance function on some set X. This set X might be anything of any objects. The objects of this sets we generally call, it, call as points. Okay. Because it's easy for us to consider them as points because when you measure distance between two, between two objects we like to consider that as a point because we don't consider the size of that object okay that might be one of the reasons i concocted the reason right now but that might be one of the reasons we generally really like uh, to call that uh, the objects in this set as points so we are measuring distance between two objects of the of the same set or i like to call it points so this set This set with a metric space. We call this set with a metric B a metric space. With a metric, it has to be metric. That means it has to satisfy all these three properties of a metric. So a set and any non-empty set. Of course, if it's empty, there's no point of defining something in there. So it has to be non-empty. And if we define a distance in there. A metric a distance function then it's a metric space i think uh, you're clear uh, someone had a doubt about the space part um hey shalish Ripple here so i have one doubt actually so when you uh, say yeah, that sure. we have a non-empty space uh, uh, so is there any <coughs> condition on that because we are talking about distances that those sets have to be ordered but do we have to uh... um, nothing like that nothing like that because if if a set is ordered then talking about is this pretty trivial right mm -hmm. if a set is ordered uh, okay no there's nothing like that i it's not trivial i'm sorry to say that but uh, the set can be and you can define a distance between any two points of the set just that it has to satisfy all these three properties okay. of a metric the right. function defined on the points Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so one thing which I just, I mean, um, so real numbers are an ordered set, right? Right, real numbers yeah. are an ordered set. So, uh, I mean, so, he, uh, and say, uh, since you are taking an example uh, of Euclidean distance, maybe that is why I think it is easier for yes. us to follow intuitive that real numbers are ordered. Yes. By the way, guys, uh, ordered set, if you someone has joined uh, new or they, might have forgotten ordered set basically means you have got less than greater than equal to type properties okay i mean very simply put uh, you can read about ordered set there uh, so if we have uh, ordered set uh, and a real number is an ordered set and we have got a say euclidean distance there so we can imagine stuff and there can also be a case uh, let's say where we are doing images to images sort of a thing and images are the objects and you cannot have a images which which is two images cannot be compared greater than less than or equal to maybe but still we can have a distance on the basis of euclidean distance we can do a pixel wise distance in all the images uh, so that is what i think shalesh i mean i am getting the intuition that that is why it has uh, i mean in metric spaces there uh, having ordered properties not required so uh, was i right yes right because if you look about order properties okay even in this R2, if you consider a simple case of R2, R cross R, it, it looks like X comma Y where X and Y both come from the reals. We can't even talk about orders in this, in this simple set like this. You cannot order this. Even mm -hmm. if you manage to order this, it will not satisfy the field properties. That means right. it will not be an ordered field. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it's a crucial step that the set R can be ordered and it's an ordered field. 
but the set of complex numbers right which is basically r2 mm. it cannot be an ordered field if you put an order to complex numbers it will not satisfy the axioms of field Absolutely. which is much more essential to us because we have lots of useful operations defined on complex numbers so we right. rather have the operations hold than an ordered field I but see. in r all of these hold with an order so it, it's an ordered field but in r2 or in complex numbers you cannot have an order along with it being an ordered field so that said uh, for a metric space we set x that may not be an ordered set mm -hmm. It's fine. It's uh, it can be any non-empty set. You okay. can talk about food items in your kitchen, mm -hmm. and you can talk about distances uh, in terms of the distance. It generally stems from the idea of distance, but in literal sense, when you practically apply it, it may not be distance at all. It might be different attributes, which yeah. which satisfy the three properties of a metric, and whatever mathematically from a metric space can be used for those things. The idea behind uh, abstraction mathematics is to capture a wider goal, mm. to capture a wider landscape that uh, certain things which satisfy these simple properties, if they hold, if they satisfy these simple properties, uh, you can define functions on it. You can talk about what kinds of sets they are. Are they compact sets? Are they connected sets? And mm. you can talk about further topology on those sets. Like in terms of networks, you talk about network to, uh, topology of networks in computer science. Even there, the distances are not the real distances, are not the real-time distances, right? Mm -hmm. But you can still talk about that. Okay. And when we move forward, we'll talk about open sets, where mm -hmm. we can completely do away with distances. Mm -hmm. So the concept of distances is also, you can say, a bit redundant. Okay. You can do away with the concept of distances and still talk about the topology of those things. So that is where point set topology comes in. That's so. Before introducing that, it is always useful to talk about metric spaces because everyone who learns topology knows metric spaces. Right. And um, metric spaces alone is pretty useful in deep learning. So yeah, it's of so it's a good opportunity for us to learn metric right. spaces. So uh, one thing, uh, I mean, uh, Shailesh, one more question, I think, uh, which Radhika has posted. Uh, and guys, uh, do you, if you want, you can, uh, I mean, pitch in. So uh, basically, once you have defined metric space, you say uh, distance from X cross X Cartesian plane, right? So right. I think Radhika is basically asking, can we have, uh, let's say, C cross R type uh, uh, space and we can we define distance there? Uh, so basically, so, can we have X and Y types? Uh, okay, right, right. No, no, that cannot be done because when we talk about space, how do you talk about distance in between two different spaces altogether? So generally, when we define a metric, if you define something like that, but defining something like that, that won't be a problem. Okay, you can always define a function from X cross Y. But uh, what is the aim looking forward to it? Exactly. Why do you define something like this? Okay. Right. It's not out of blue that I think about something and define it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was not defined in a day. Of course, uh, people had thought about it, what they intended from it. And they came up with this definition on a particular set because they intended to talk about the concept of open sets, closed sets, limit points, dense dense bounded uh, certain topological properties on that set so right. there was it's not very useful to talk about uh, two different sets and distances between those two points in this set it's like talking about uh, so Shailesh, basically you're saying that the type uh, matters here right like x is of one type and y is of a different type so it doesn't make sense to measure the distance from one right. type to the other right, right. you, can, you can say about that you can you can say something like that but uh, that said uh, you know you can always have a function of on two different sets uh, which might satisfy the metric properties but the thing is why are we defining something like are we just defining it just for the sake of mathematics or just to make, uh, you know, invent fancy mathematics or are we looking forward to bring about something? Uh, is there some intention towards defining something like this? Definitely, there is an intention because all the calculus, the mathematics that developed, uh, 
through the field of calculus uh, uh, differentiation and uh, something like continuity it all depended on these three properties so it was enough to incorporate these three properties in a metric and uh, of course distances between two points can be talked about in a single space if they're two different spaces it doesn't make much sense even if it makes sense uh, what is the purpose uh, purpose behind defining something like that it has to be taken into account uh, if anybody wants to pitch in, you can just uh, unmute yourself. You can ask questions directly. Uh, so one thing that, that I wanted to understand is like regarding a distance. So like my thought after listening to you is basically uh, we do not uh, need an ordered set because in in the definition of the um, in the in the in the definition itself it says that you know the uh, the sign doesn't matter right is that, is that one of the reasons why uh, we could say the set doesn't uh, need to be ordered the, the definition uh, yeah the definition does not talk about signs or anything like that the definition is just precise a set x whose elements we shall call points is said to be a metric space if with any two points p and q of x there is associated a real number and the function defined the function that uh, that holds the three properties so the ordered set it's not necessary because you know we are not talking about the order of two points x and y we're just talking about distance between these two points and if you think about order suppose i have two points here and here how do you talk about order of these two points and what relation does it have uh, if we talk about distances between these two points? Okay, understood. Yeah. Understood? Thank you. Yeah. Because uh, if, even if you order this set, okay, I can always rotate this plane. I can rotate this plane. And then the points are here and here. So your ordering is always relative to something here, in here. In R2 plane, your order is always relative to something. So it does not make much sense. Mm. Yeah. There is an ordering though. Uh, just for your curiosity, there is an ordering in R2 and in complex space. There is an ordering. Uh, you can come up with an ordering if you can think about it. You can come up with an ordering known as the dictionary ordering. So it basically says that suppose an x2, y2. So you just like just like in a dictionary, you just compare the first two. If first two are comparable, suppose x1 is less than x2, then you can just directly use this. Suppose these are equal, then you compare the next one. If you can compare the next one, then you can talk about this thing in here. So that's known as a dictionary ordering. I mean, it's pretty unnecessary to go into that. If you want to delve more mathematically into it, I can just guide you for that uh, but for a current scenario i think it's pretty relevant in here so yeah but there is an ordering there is a dictionary ordering okay uh, i just move forward so i'll just uh, state certain more examples of a metric i'll just define you can check if it's a metric or not okay I think this will satisfy and this will become a metric. This is a metric. In fact, this is a metric where I define distance between two points to be one when x is not equal to y and to be zero when x is equal to y. This will satisfy all the three properties. It's pretty trivial. You can verify this. Uh, there's one more interesting metric uh, that I'd like to come. To, I'll just just come up with that metric. This is suppose I already have a metric D. I already know the D is some metric. Okay, which metric? It's not necessary, and I defined a different metric. Okay, this can be defined as. Um, sorry. This can be defined as the minimum of one 
and d of x y. Uh, this is a pretty handy tool because through this you can define a new metric and it's it's a pretty discrete a discrete it's not a discrete metric uh the discrete metric is this metric but uh yes so you can define a new metric using an any other metric by using minimum of one and d of x y you can verify this further uh one important metric that i like to talk about is I'll call this D1. You'll know shortly why I call this D1. Summation X A Y K. Where X is equal to X1, X2, XK, XN. Okay, so what basically this says it. Uh, if anyone heard about this, I think this should look similar or familiar. This is known as the taxi cab met metric, also known as the L1 metric. Why this is known as the taxi cab metric? It's pretty. I think not in India, but in the United States, this is known as a taxi cab metric. Uh, that's keeping into mind that the roads are pretty evenly distributed into grids. So if you talk about the symbol between two points, X and Y, what this formula basically says is you just take this component. Suppose this is the x-axis. I'll just change the color again. Okay. So it just says this. First, take this distance. Then you measure this distance. So it's basically this plus this right so it's generally how the cars would travel travel or you might as well you might as well do this you can measure this distance first and then this distance so this metric with uh, this function would satisfy the three properties of the metric and this again will form metric space in r2 or rn for that matter <coughs> And it's known as the taxi cab metric. I think everyone got this point. Uh, this is known as the taxi cab metric because it's generally we're dividing the pathways in the road as grid systems. Yeah. Um, hey, Shalisha, I hope you won't mind me. But since we are talking about taxis, do you remember uh, the famous uh, story of Ramanujan and the taxi number? Yeah, yeah, one seven two nine. Yeah, right. So it it will be great yes. if you can like just talk about that quickly, if you remember. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I think I remember. So basically, what happened is, yeah. So guys, we're taking a bit of brief digression here. Uh, so there's a story like uh, Ramanujan was in hospital and G H R D. He visited him. G H R D is known as his mentor in Cambridge. Uh, basically, he was a person. Ramanujan sent all his mathematical work to, and he recognized his genius and called him over to England. So Ramanujan was in hospital, and G H R D came visiting him. And when he came, you know, in between mathematicians, sometimes the talks are quite mathematical too. It's quite abstract, and it's funny, and it's not quite funny too. So when uh, Hardy came near Ramanuj and he said, like, uh, I, I traveled in a taxi. The number was 1729. I don't think it, there's anything interesting between uh, in this number. Uh, to Ramanuj, to Hardy's fancy, Ramanuj said, this is the smallest number, which is the sum of two cubes. Uh, uh, sorry, smallest number, which can be represented this, as the sum of two cubes in two different ways. If I'm not mistaken, 
this is the smallest number which can be represented as a sum of two cubes in two different ways. I think you can Google it, guys, 1729. Uh, you'll find all the documentation regarding this number. It's pretty famous. It's pretty famous. So yeah. uh, I think you'll find it. Yeah, thanks for that, Chalish. Like, we can go back now. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, we'll go back. So, yeah, we're talking about this taxi cab metric. So, uh, this is known as the L1 metric, and this is uh, really useful. This, this will come to be, uh, Vipul will talk about this later on. Uh, this will be really useful in deep learning. Uh, I think computer vision. When you learn about computer vision and deep learning, this L1 metric would be pretty useful to you. So I think it's it's it'll be worth note what you can note it down. It's defined on any two points on our end. So basically in R2. These two points are x1, x2, so distance between. Sorry, would be could be given as summation x1 minus y1 plus x2 minus y2. So it basically just says this sum this with this. Or this with this. So this is the L2 metric. The L sorry, the L1 metric. The L1. And know that this is small, okay? Because uh, L1 capital L is something different. Again, this is the space of a Lebesgue integrable function. So it's it's somewhat related to this, but uh, it's a different concept. So uh, just Bear that that this is a lowercase letter, lowercase alphabet. Uh, now come to something called the L2 metric, which is the Euclidean distance itself. So it's basically, you know, summation xk So I'm not writing the index, uh, I just wrote it. Uh, sorry, Salish. Do you have a quick reference yeah. to where exactly uh, does this use uh, does this get used in uh, you know neural networks and stuff like that? Uh, uh, just you know, if you can name something, probably I'll try and uh, correlate. So, do you have? Sure, where? sure. Uh, Ripple will elaborate more on this point, but uh, I would just like to mention in computer vision when you talk about convolution neural networks and all. Uh, when you talk about pixels. So this L1 norm, there we call it L1 norm, okay? You use it there. I don't know so, the explicit details about that. People will talk further on that. Yeah, re uh, really quick. So we can use this as uh, regularizations and loss function. We can use okay. it as directly as a loss function as well. And we can also, um, I mean, a lot of places we can also use to sometimes to create Clusters in K means or K nearest neighbor, those algorithms also use. Uh, okay. Maybe we'll take, we can take that offline. Yeah, we can take that probably in that uh, board. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, that's nice. Uh, okay, uh, even similarly, the L2 metric or the L2 norm. So there's a difference between norm and a metric. I think it would not be very beneficial for you guys to go into the details of norm and metric. But if you want to read, it's it's not it's not difficult. But I'll recommend a book. It's by an Indian author, S. Kumarasam. If it's if rural is going pretty difficult for you, I think this would be a topology of metric spaces. Rudin is, by the way, a, real, a great book. Uh, it's hailed as a difficult book too, but uh, you know uh, you can go through this book too by Kumar I'm um, sorry, I spelled it wrong. Uh, 
Okay, so topology of metric spaces. So there initially he covers norms and metrics. So I think that will clarify. I'll I'll I posted the name of this book. We'll also post it in Discord. I'll just send you the name of the book there. Okay, so this is what was L2 norm and L1 norm. So L2 norm is basically the Euclidean distance. I think we just I just showed you showed this to you while talking about this in R2. I'll just go back. Yeah, here, in here. I'm unable to find it. Yeah. So this was an example of L2 L2 distance. Again, this L2 L is small. Okay. Now, anybody has any questions till now? Because I think it's it's pretty much heavy now. Anybody has any questions? You can you can just come into the audio. I have no problem. You can pitch in. Yeah. Hello, Silas. Yeah. Hi. 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 Uh, I'm Janardhan. Actually, I have a doubt. Uh, that you are talking about even it can be used in uh, other than uh, matrix in topology kind of stuff so other than this uh, normal matrix uh, whatever you are discussing where this right. kind of topology will be used in normal mathematical sense or computer science a normal mathematic in mathematical sense uh, uh you're talking about the specific l1 or l2 or in general metric space no, in general uh in gen other than matrix where the topology will be useful okay so i, I understood that a matrix space uh, matrix are one one way of uh, understanding the topology so is there anywhere this topology will be used in general mathematics yeah uh, Shailesh, uh i'll take that up sorry about that so sure, um, sure. um topology uh you most of the time you won't be interacting directly with topology okay although if you want to analyze something so here the couple of lectures which we did yesterday and uh, i mean last uh, monday and today this is uh we are doing analysis right okay. so whenever you want to analyze something like you want to analyze where exactly this algorithm came into picture what exactly is a mapper algorithm okay or maybe um uh, some uh, how uh, so there is a very good uh, uh, paper which I have shared on Discord, which basically talks about how so how exactly neural networks learn is still a black box. So two uh, people are using topology to study that how exactly weights of neural network are evolving at what point they evolve at which point neural network learns the difference between one and seven. Like uh, let's say for example. So that whenever you have to do theoretical analysis and uh, do those kind of stuff, their um, uh, topology is used a lot. Also in com uh, computer networks, when you want to design that, there mm -hmm. as well, yeah, you can use uh, topology. Okay, so that means it is the same as uh, uh, in, in terms of topology, what the geometrical topology kind of stuff. Is it related yeah. to that? Okay. Shalish, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So topology generally derives from geometry or either way around. Okay, the top topology generally talks about aspects of geometry which are not changed by minute aspects. Like if you change the shape of that thing, the topology still remains the same. Something like that. I'm just hand waving right now, but uh, it would be yeah. difficult for you to grasp if I say homeomorphism or something like that. Okay. okay. So okay. So basically, topology is very directly very much related to geometry okay okay yeah okay yeah so it's very much related to geometry and the paper that Ripple is talking about neural networks how neural networks learn it uses topology and something known as manifold okay mm -hmm. yeah yeah i heard about a manifold it. a manifold yeah. is a very much it's a manifold you can say it's a generalization of curves and surfaces uh, okay. in lame if speaking very in a very layman terms, manifold is a generalization of a surface or a curve that we generally mm -hmm. talk about. Uh, so in that paper, they are trying to explain how a neural network really learns through topology and manifolds. So to know what is a manifold, 
you have to know topology okay okay because mm -hmm. there you talk about topological spaces and there is something called a differentiable manifold or a riemannian manifold or there's different kind of manifolds that's exactly the concept that einstein used he used a riemannian manifold okay mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in his right. uh, in his paper of relativity yeah i just remembered one more point so there is a, a separate field known as of data analysis known as topological data analysis mm -hmm. um, uh there also um i mean these things are used a lot the core concepts of topology i am absolutely unaware of that so i won't talk about it too much all i know is that uh, whenever you have to understand uh, how the features are in a high dimensional complex data etc uh, you uh -huh. use topological data analysis so maybe we all can check that up and okay. if you find some if i find and if anybody finds a good resource for that um share it on discord so that everybody can look into it okay actually today only i have seen uh, something called manifold learning in sql learn or not uh, uh, you know right. module mm -hmm. so and uh, actually i i did graduation in maths long back oh, nice. okay okay i, I don't know may, i didn't uh, i could i couldn't relate many of the mathematics into deep learning so right now uh, the way you people are explaining uh, i am very much Uh, trying to relate those uh, whatever I find out to these things. Yeah, we are trying our best. I'll yeah, keep guiding us as well. If you have some good points, uh, Rahul. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Shailesh, uh, to uh, I mean, is that all, or do you want to cover something more? Okay, I'll just introduce the idea of an open set, and oh, yeah, I'll sure. just I'll just wrap up. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. <coughs> so. Okay. sorry so yeah if you know this idea of a metric space it will come in really handy i know it's a bit more mathematical now but uh, it'll come in really handy believe me uh so uh keeping that aside i'll just uh this is just a small assignment if x Okay. Okay, these are two points and if I define the distance between these two points as x1 minus y1. Okay? That means I'm taking the difference between the first coordinate. So will this be a metric? So I'll leave this leave you guys to verify this. Just just note this down please. I'll just take a screenshot of this. That uh, will this this function be a metric? Um, since I asked you, you might as well guess that this is not a metric. But I'll leave you guys to verify this. This is known as a pseudo metric. Okay. So okay. So I'll just introduce the concept of an open ball. Okay. This is very central to the idea of metric space and topology. Okay, what is an open ball? So you might have always seen something like an open set, A B, okay, which is the collection of all sets, all x such that well, x belongs to real number. Okay, I think uh, this is a pretty central idea in topology and the idea of an open ball. <coughs> this is what We know this open interval. Okay, so stemming uh, the root of open ball is in the idea of an open interval. So what open interval says, there is some, uh, there is a set where this point x is strictly greater than x, but and strictly less than b. Uh, sorry, strictly greater greater than a, and strictly less than b. so what an open ball is okay i'll just introduce the idea of metric here again okay just bear with the notation for some time it's just so b is for ball d is for metric x is for center r is for radius i think radius center metric ball 
okay so it's basically the set of all y in a metric space x so here i'm not mentioning which metric space i'll be talking about it's it's general consideration which just name it to be an arbitrary metric space x okay and distance between x and y is strictly less than r it is strictly less than r so it's basically the idea of a ball there's this point and you know you take all these points which has the distance between the point is strictly less than r that means you can consider this as a ball with no boundary you know uh physically that's not uh, very practical to observe it but you can just exclude the boundary of the ball okay so what the ball will look like is this open ball okay and this is a very central idea in all of metric spaces and topology alike the idea of an open ball or a neighborhood and an open set leads us to the idea of topology of general topology will we talk about i think we can talk about that later on but today so this idea of an open ball or an open neighborhood rudin calls it an open neighborhood of point p okay it is the set of all q so this sign this sign is the sign of belongs to y belongs to x okay so y belongs to x such and distance between p and q q belongs to x and is less than r so rudin talks about this neighborhood okay so you can elaborate on that i'll just uh, ask you to go through page number 32 of rudin so basically i'll just give you the reading uh page 30 31 uh, so 30 from metric spaces beginning from metric spaces not the part before that okay page 30 31 um 32 uh, 33 and 34 just if you could really read this if you can read up to 36 that will be great like just before compact spaces so you get an idea of open sets and why we are talking about open sets and union of open sets i have not talked about the concept of open sets here at all i took it in a ball or an open neighborhood okay that is what rudin talks about uh starting from his definition 2.18 is for no definition 2.18 from there till till theorem 2.30 so you might not go through proofs if you like to go through proofs it will be great but it's it's pretty much enough if you just go through the statements if you just browse through the book from this part on that you'll know the idea of a neighborhood or the idea of a limit point an open set interior point these are pretty crucial ideas um so just just i'll just ask you to just go through what an open set is okay just just go through this once what is an open set at least do this an open set and just remember what an open ball is okay uh, rest will be taken care <coughs> yeah people get patient all right so first of all uh, i mean anybody has any doubts uh, if you wouldn't ask already uh, I'll just check the chat. No, I, I'm I'm on the chat, Sarish. So it's fine. Um, so I will take that as a no that uh, we don't have any more doubts. So Radhika, uh, regarding your doubt, uh, I will I don't want to talk about it because as I said, I am underprepared for it right now. Maybe we can I can take that up next time. And so first. Let's thanks Shailesh. Thanks Shailesh for your time. Thanks for explaining your topology. Yeah. Yes. So uh, thank you, Vipul, for giving me that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So, yeah. um, 
i hope guys the lecture was uh, decent enough it was a new topic uh, even i learned a lot i want to go back to masters again <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to mathematics again but yeah i mean it was really nice a top challenge very well prepared and we learned a lot the point which i want to make is that um, uh, understanding these topics are uh, very, uh, uh, very very uh, very fundamental even if you don't uh, i mean uh, remember everything if you simply can understand like he explained what spaces are until and unless you understand space understanding clustering algorithm etc will be difficult or simply formulating a machine learning problem will be difficult until and unless we are doing something which uh, you know uh, directly takes uh, something which has been done already and we you are just trying to reproduce it if something fails uh, we need to understand that why that thing is failing and for that understanding of metric space at least Uh, has helped me a lot uh, while devising uh, a problem with unknowns for example we saw yet last time right uh, the python code space we took the space of python codes and how do you compare to python code so we have to come up with a di- uh, distance metric until and unless those things are defined you cannot uh, do machine learning uh, uh, on on any problem so that is why i thought that it will be very uh, good for all of us including me to understand topology uh, once again so that was the idea uh, if you guys have any doubts any problems feel free to uh, you know post them on the discord and um, yeah um, that's all and uh, we'll meet to again on coming monday uh, we'll discuss uh, linear algebra then i'll get uh, i'll try to get hold of shailesh once again to discuss linear algebra so thanks a lot uh, guys for joining and happy diwali sure. everyone sure sure yeah happy diwali no, yeah happy diwali to you all happy diwali good all right um bye guys uh, i'm dropping off now uh, shall if, if you don't mind can we jump up on the hangouts sure 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 yeah